All right, guys. Welcome back to Freedom Friday. Yes. We have a great episode today. I Yes. Yeah. Today, the title is The Holy Spirit and Discerning the Times. We want to give you some good questions, some good Bible verses, and some good application on how you can recognize what's of the truth and what's of the lies. Mm. You ready? Yes, I am, right. I am ready. Here we go. Hey guys, welcome back to Freedom Friday. Before anything, please make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and then share this video with a friend. We're trying to grow our channel. We're trying to impact more people with the truth. Mm -hmm. And we want you to help us be able to do that. Isn't that right? Absolutely. Okay. So the question we want to lead off with today is how do we figure out what is true and false in today's culture? Mm. So we want to set the stage. We want to ask some good questions, give you some good Bible verses, and then we're going to get into some application on how we can do that, right? Well, I have one question for you. Okay. Does it really make any difference? I mean, obviously there's truth about God and truths about Jesus that we need to know because that involves our eternal life and it involves our relationship to God and what kind of people we are. But in the everyday life, you know, from the time I get up in the morning and go to work and talk to people there and go to the movies and do, does that stuff matter? I mean, does it matter whether it's true or lies? Is it that like hardly defined? Well, our founders believe that, uh, they believe in the laws of nature and nature's God, that God had something to say about everything in life and that every aspect of our lives should be governed by what is true and what is right. Oh, what you're saying then is something like the law of gravity? Yeah. I mean, it's it. We, we need to truly understand the law of gravity because if we don't, there are certain consequences. There could be some major cons- yeah, there consequences. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not, I don't think of that as a spiritual thing. No. But think about how about in your relationships, mm-hmm. how you desire to have the person who's you're in relationship with speak truth to you. You also desire to know the truth about what kind of food you're eating. Like, what kind of stuff does this? What kind of stuff does the meat have in it? What about the vitamins? What about right. all these supplements? You want the facts, the truth in everything else, and so we should desire that in every part of our lives. I think you're right because I, I know a lot of people who are very careful about what they eat. You know, they read the ingredients of everything, and because they know there are certain things that are not good for your body, and they also know that. In today's world, there are a lot of things put into foods to make them look better and taste better. McDonald's. Uh, well, like splicing fish genes into tomatoes to make them redder, to make them look more luscious. So I, I know that, that people like truth there, but does that apply to other things as well? Of course it does. Food? And what this really comes down to is we should ask good questions because good questions Ultimately, curiosity should lead you to reason, and reason should lead you to truth if you're being honest. So our whole job in this is just to be a good journalist. So questions mm-hmm. leading you to what? Are questions you? and curiosity should lead questions to curiosity reason. Lead you to reason, which is the ability to critically think about everything that's presented and then make a logical conclusion on that, and that should lead to truth. That should be the truth. Yeah, right. well, I think you're right, because I think if, if people spent the same energy that they use on checking out what foods are good for them uh, and put those same questions on to all kinds of other things that come up in this yeah. life. Or what goes inside your body. Yeah, that, that we would have a lot of truth bursting forth. Right, and it's you want to be someone who's concerned about truth in every area of your life so you can be a person full of integrity, full of character, and so that you can be resolved in your own spirit and mind that you're doing what is right Mm. right no matter what you know gandhi said something very interesting Mm. um he said an error does not become truth by reason of multiplied propagation nor does truth become error because nobody sees it truth stands even if there is no public support it is self-sustained and for those who need a little bit more help what does it mean in the most simplest terms? Well, it means the fact that a lie is told over and over and over again, and that you may hear it a hundred times a day, doesn't make it true. Neither does the fact that nobody told you the truth change that truth. If nobody told you about 
the law of gravity, for example, yeah. and you decided, I can, I, I like to jump, I can jump off the roof of a building uh, under the parking lot. Uh, if you don't know the truth, it doesn't change it. The okay. truth remains the same whether you or I know it. So that doesn't matter how close the person is to you, how much the media is saying it, how much, if, even if the whole world, Captain America has this great quote. Yeah. And uh, it's in the comics, but they brought it out in the movie. Mm -hmm. But he says, <clears throat> it's, it's our job to plant ourselves by the river of truth and grow roots there. And when the world tells you to bend and move, it's our job to say, no, you move. And that's Ooh. how we should be with truth. Wow. Nothing's going to get in our way. Nothing's going to change our mind. What's true is true and what's wrong is wrong. Simple as that, mm -hmm. guys. We should be so concerned, about, so concerned about truth that we don't care about any lie. Being concerned with truth says that you are an upstanding person. Mm. Well, what about people? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about... Uh, for, for me, one of the things that really concerns me is all the truth about COVID, yeah. which is in the news every single day, multiple yep. times, and the vaccines. Mm -hmm. And I hear the narrative that's being pushed by the government and the pharmaceutical companies that say, you got to be vaccinated because if you're not, you're killing people or you're going to die or whatever. Fear, fear, fear. Yeah. Fear. So, uh, and yet... I have found multiple sources of scientists mm -hmm. and some scientists who even work for the pharmaceuticals and doctors who are mainline doctors who've been in practice and saved thousands of lives using methods that are not part of the prescribed America's media. America's frontline doctors, Joe Rogan, Project Veritas just released videos talking about natural immunity. Yeah. Um, so it's there for people who want to look. Is that an area where we need to discern the truth? I think that is one of the main areas we need to discern the truth. And, I think and, so too. And ask ourselves, is there something else going deeper? I know, remember when we had Wesley on? Yes. And she said that she just started questioning because she saw that clip about Trump and she, she thought he was a racist. Right. And then she saw the full clip yes. and realized, whoa, the media took this and, and ran with it. Right. They took Maybe this there's a little it. more to the story. That's all we want to do with this. And, you know, the Bible talks about this cosmic battle between truth and lies. Right? Oh, and who, who, where did lies come from? Well, truth comes from God. Okay. All truth originates with God. In fact, John 14, 6 says, Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. Right. Right? However, in John 8, Jesus says to the Pharisees, you are of your father, the devil. He was a liar from the beginning and the father of lies. There is no truth in him. And when he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own nature. Ah. So you have this battle of truth and lies, good and evil, light versus darkness. And what's very interesting is it goes all the way back to the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. God told Adam and Eve, don't eat that. You'll die. Right? Yeah. And what did the snake say? To, what did Satan say? Did God really say not to do that? No, he didn't really mean that. He He's holding out on you. What he said is, um, if you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. And he doesn't want you to do that. No. Yeah. So being concerned with what is true is really being concerned of what is of the Lord. Is, and, and that, regardless of how it makes you feel. You're saying that Satan is still active today. Very much so. Lies. Very much so. And interesting... The lies that, that Satan spreads don't have to be just uh, uh, divine lies. They can be everyday lies because everyday lies lead you away from the truth. That's right. If I can, if I can convince you of a small lie, you've lost something. Well, think about the lies that are happening right now. What are the lies that are being told about gender, about well, marriage, yeah. about... <laughs> That your skin color defines everything about you, That's rather it. than your character. That, my character. These are means all nothing. lies. You know what I mean? But they are lies. And interesting to me is how many people adopt lies when the truth is so evident. And I thought about this, and I thought to myself, you know, I can understand if somebody doesn't hasn't had a chance to learn the truth that they and uh, they're being told a lie. And they might go, oh, yeah, that sounds yeah. good. I'll, I think I'll do that. 
there comes a point when there is so much evidence available that to continue to believe the lie requires that you give up something else. It requires you give a lot of effort. You give up your integrity. Yeah. You give up your intelligence. You give up your ability to discern. You give up your, your dignity. You know, one of the reasons why we're so passionate about this is because one of the Ten Commandments, do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4.25, Therefore, laying aside falsehood, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Ephesians 5.11, Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. So That's, that's what we're trying to do, guys. So how do we recognize now the difference between truth and lies? Is there somebody who can help us out with that? Well, there is somebody in the book of John. That's one of the best sources for finding that. Exactly. I, I like this. I like this because uh, these things talk about the Holy Spirit. And in John, I'm going to give you a quote from John 15 and then one from John 16, which talks about the Holy Spirit. In John 15, verse 26, Jesus says this. When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is... The Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness of me, and you will bear witness also, because you have been with me from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, Jesus says the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. Mm -hmm. He could have said it's the Divine Spirit, it's the Spirit of God and me. He said it's the Spirit of Truth. Then in chapter 16, and this is still Jesus speaking these words, he says in, in 16, verse 13, he mm -hmm. says, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into mm. all the truth. That's good. He doesn't say he will guide you into the truth. He will guide you into all the truth. And for that, uh, when, you, when you think about the way the Holy Spirit does, he operates in the human world sphere. Right. You know, in this same chapter, it tells about the Holy Spirit and tells about mm. four things that he does. Uh, when he comes, he'll convict the world convict. of sin, judgment, and righteousness. These are worldly things. Okay. Number two, he will guide you into all truth. Mm -hmm. Not some truth, all truth. And that includes everything that's spiritual and everything that's worldly as well. He will disclose to you what is to come not only in the heavenly realm, but what is to come on That's the right. earth. And number four, he will glorify Jesus. Mm. So the Holy Spirit deals with not only spiritual aspects of the truth, but the truth that's Which evident around us in the world. corresponds to the rest of Scripture. Psalm 24 says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Mm -hmm. God is the one who has made the rules, the guidelines by which we want to abide. And it's... You know, you can only drive a Ferrari if you're going within the boundaries of the street. Right. It's hard. It's hard. To, it's hard to drive a Ferrari when there's rocks top building and top, building yeah. tops. You know yes. what I mean? And it's the same way with liberty. You can only be truly free when you abide and put effort into obeying the laws of God and um, living your life in certain constraints. Mm -hmm. Right. The person who practices celibacy and will only have sex with their the spouse of the opposite gender when they're married has more freedom than someone who is licentiousness before marriage. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. The law is the wise restraints that make men free. And liberty, truth, all these things require effort. And so our effort in this is actually 2 Timothy 2.15 where he says, do your best to present yourself to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed but who correctly and accurately handles the word of truth. truth, right? Amen. Even John 14, 26, but the helper, I love that. The Holy Spirit is the helper. Third person of the Trinity also, he is not a it, he's not a force, he's a person. Mm -hmm. He's God himself, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I said to you. Here's where the effort comes in. 
sometimes when you're, you, you can test to this, mm-hmm. when you're going through life, you just has nothing to do with spiritual things, but you're doing something and then scripture pops into your mind, right? That's because you've memorized scripture before and you've put in the effort. And so our effort in this is to know God's word so the Holy Spirit can bring it back to our remembrance. Uh, how can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to thy word. Mm-hmm. With all my heart I have sought thee. That's one of them. Also, Thy in, word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Yes. And where it also says, that's, that's your a word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And that's uh, 105. There you go. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And where are our feet? Our, this is not just spiritual stuff. Yeah. This is our every day, where <clears throat> we go, what we do. Yeah. Thy word is a lamp and a light unto my path. Yeah. Let's kind of bring it home real quick. Truth is not limited to spiritual things. And as a Christian, if you think abiding by these restrictions, abiding by these tyrannical government power hungry crazy psychopaths who run our country right now is loving your neighbor you need to check yourself you do loving your neighbor is not bowing down to a bully and allowing the bully to walk over other people and nurses who have lost their job and people who are dealing with death and all that stuff loving your neighbor is standing up to the bully and saying enough is enough it's standing up for the truth and we are challenged daily, all of us, you and Tim and I and everybody is challenged daily to examine in the light of truth the things that we get from other people and from the government and from yeah. medicine and from everybody else. Why? Because God has told us to do that. That's right. He has told us to honor and cherish the truth because he is the truth. Yeah. There are so many lies that are going on now and they try to make it very difficult. Well, where do all lies stem from? This they is all we, come need from hammer, the we need to hammer we need to we need to hammer this in. All lies stem from Satan. That's it. Any lie that I've ever told did not come from God. No. It came from Satan. Mm-hmm. It and comes it came, from the it world. It came from me believing something yeah. that Satan had it said. It comes from our own sinful heart, but you know what I mean. It is. But and where does all truth come from? All truth comes from the Holy it Spirit. It originates from the Spirit of truth, originates from That's God right. the Father. That's right. Yeah, and, and you know, people say, well, trust your heart. Your heart's Here the most deceptive 17, thing nine, about you. God says, the heart of man is wicked above all things. Yep. Unless your heart has been transformed. Yeah. And that's a process, because I'm still in the process. We're going to do wicked things because that's what comes out of our heart. And one of the things, you know, in, in, in law, whenever there's a, a murder, for example, they always look for a motive. And one of the motives they look for is who benefits. Uh, Anytime that you hear, you need to do so and so and so and so and so, one of the first questions you should ask yourself is why? Why? Who benefits? Do I benefit? Who benefits from this? Why are they saying this? Why uh, now? So that's some of and the questions what, you can ask to be a good journalist. Is, is there enough, is there evidence that I can look at that is pro and con so that I can weigh the evidence exactly. and discern with the help of the Holy Spirit what the truth is? And usually I'll give, we'll give you a tip, a little inside tip. Yep. Based on history, if you're asking questions and the person who you're asking the questions to wants to silence you, mm-hmm. probably don't trust them. Yeah. Right. What about this? George Washington says, truth will ultimately prevail where there is pains to bring it to light. It means there's effort in this, that you can't yeah. just wait for someone else to do it. You have to do it in your own life. Well, it's like the truth of God, guys. You know, the truth of God is available to everybody, right. but many, many, many people don't see it. So it's not sort of like, well, the truth is there. You know, Everybody just ought to go, oh, there's the truth. That's God. I'm going to respond to him. No. You, you have a part in the process. We have a part to help people recognize the truth right. of God. And they have a responsibility to respond to it. God's truth is there for everybody. Right. The truth is there for every single situation we are in. Too often we let our own hearts and minds be led astray 
by somebody who says, if you only do this, yeah. you'll be as wise as God, or you'll get this benefit, or you'll get this, this, or you'll have this, this, and this, this. Really? Mm -hmm. Did anybody ever get a free lunch? We're supposed to not conform to the pattern of this world, Ooh. but be transformed by the renewing of, of our mind. mind. So then we'll be able well, to wait test. A now, my mind, is, is it a spiritual thing or not? So that we can test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I want to give you guys an example of the pattern of this world. This is from a, a clip of Stephen Colbert. A little brainwashing going on. Um, but one of the questions I want to ask beforehand is, how can a society thrive and prosper when the circulation of lies is more of a currency than truth? Mm. And so this clip right here, we'll show it to you. It's cringeworthy. Here you go. You know, the verse that pops into my head after okay. that clip is Romans one twenty two. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and professing to be wise, they became fools. That, that clip right there shows the propaganda machine, the idea of this world, and you look at people who believe this. Mm -hmm. They also believe that a baby is not a human being, it's just, you know, tissue. Mm -hmm. They also believe that a man can marry a man, and it's totally okay. They also believe that... A man can be a woman, a woman can be a man, and vice versa, and you got totally all these pronouns. There are, there are we so are so things. in desperate need of God's word, of God's truth. And God's truth is so much better. Yes. It is so much better. And Jesus says, if you, uh, you, will, know if you, the truth. you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free if you abide in me. If you abide in him. That's it. Yeah, you're right, Jim. Uh, as you were saying those things, I'm thinking, you know, there's a bill that they're trying to get to. Congress right now it's called the women's rights bill mm, talk about deception that bill part of it, that bill allows women to kill their babies up to the minute of birth yeah up to the minute of birth now all scientists are saying all reputable scientists are saying at 16 weeks or even sometimes before six weeks at six weeks heartbeat sorry, we can determine the heartbeat of another individual inside the mother. It's not the mother's heartbeat. There's a second heartbeat. If they would have read this, they would have understand that you're a human being from the moment of conception. More and more people, uh, scientists, are saying it's a person. Yeah. And you don't kill a person, especially the most innocent of people yeah. who's not even been judged by anything fair. But here's why it's so important. Look at how truth impacted slavery. Yes. Isn't that great? Slave, the truth, truth about the dignity of the human being and the dignity that's in the Declaration and the Constitution right. from God, what our founders got from God, put an end to the heinous practice of slavery Amen. here in America. And Amen. that same truth of God's word, his truth, can put an end to everything else. We just have to be willing to fight for it. And, and I want to encourage all of you who are brothers and sisters in Christ to indeed stand up and fight for it. I have friends who say, well, you know, we're Christians, we shouldn't do that. We should just love and let people be guided by the way we love and help people when, when we can and do that stuff. They, they, really, they, really, they really mean something else when they say that, though. Well, they really mean, well, I just don't want to get my hands dirty. Right. It's too much of an effort. Yeah. And uh, I understand. It's messy business and it's scary business. Yeah, it's fun, though. But... It also is true. So if you're a believer, I, I ask you to speak to the Lord, ask him to reveal to you yeah. how, to, how to approach things. Something really simple that I saw today. Uh, on September 24th, the BBC did a report on oh, yeah. COVID in Wales. Yeah. And they said, COVID-19 uh, COVID in Wales. Oh, this is One great. third of the hospitalized people were unvaccinated. That was the headline. So that means two-thirds were vaccinated? Well, it does. <laughs> but the emphasis was on the unvaccinated. So if you looked at that quickly, you would go, 
oh my God, one third of the hospitalized people for COVID were unvaccinated. Wait a minute. Yeah. Think about it. This is one of those times when you need to think about what is it really saying and what does it really mean? Like critically think, use the brain cells God gave you. The headline would have been far different if it had said COVID-19 in Wales. Two thirds of the people hospitalized are vaccinated. Yeah, definitely changes the narrative. It changes the the narrative. Now the forces want you to believe that vaccination is everything. That's why once you're vaccinated, you got to get two boosters. Now there's some say or three boosters, and some are even saying, "Well, there's probably going to be a fourth booster that you're going to yeah. have to get." But you still have to wear a mask, and you still have to stay six feet away from people, even though there's a mounting, why mounting we, why evidence. Why are we so afraid that people who have had COVID have a, have an immunity to it that goes beyond what the vaccine does? You can't go places. I'm going to the hospital tomorrow to have an operation. Well. By the, time cannot, wa- by the time they're watching this. Oh, I went to the hospital a couple of days ago for an operation. <laughs> uh, but you can't come, my wife can't come to the hospital to see me while I'm recovering, hopefully, uh, without being vaccinated. Or a negative test. Or having a, uh, having a negative test within 72 hours. Uh, my grandson, who's already had COVID and has a natural immunity to it now, that's, that his body has produced, that's better than the than the shot. He can't come because he doesn't have. Because I'm white, it's racist. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there, are, there are these things that are so important to think about mm-hmm. because the day is coming when people are going to s- succumb to this. And Revelation, we'll, and we'll end with this. Revelation thirteen. This is a section that's talking about the Antichrist. Mm-hmm. Here's the part that's interesting. See if this starts to sound like today. And he causes all the small and the great and the rich and the poor and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. Wow. And he provides that no one should be able to buy or sell anything who has except the one who has the mark. Does that sound like places that say now you can't go and go to this store and you can't go to this place and you can't do this thing unless you show your vaccination card? Here's the thing. The vaccine is not the the mark of the beast. No, it is not. But But it's it's conditioning. It's social conditioning. Big time. And believe me, if you have a tendency to buy in to the lies about the vaccine and the lies about COVID without investigating them. Yeah, if you think this is all for your safety. Right. You must be, you must really make sure you're in Jesus yeah. and that you're not around for when the Antichrist comes and gives out the mark. I used to say, how could people ever take the mark? The same way that they denied who Jesus was when they actually saw him. And the same way we deny God after we see all creation right now. Well, guys, we we need help. Oh, Lord. Yes. Help Lord, us help us be more concerned about truth yes. than anything else. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that you your word is truth. Jesus, you prayed for us saying, sanctify them in your word. Your word is truth. So, Lord, may we hold fast to it. May we cling to it. Be with mm-hmm. everybody watching. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys. With that, we will sign off. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share this with a friend, and then go read God's word for yourself. Amen. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye. And then uh, also the previous page, 1526. I see the cream of the blue water. I see Tim climbing a coconut tree. He's going down the coconut. Yeah, I can see it like it was just this past July. That'd be one. In the Bahamas. Cool. Cool. I think that went very well. I think it went very well too for a couple of guys who said, hey, what are we going to do about this? Yeah. Yeah, I think it went. I think it went well, son.